fluid and electrolyte the major component of body water body body mass is water the contribution of water to the body weight varies with age the tbw is the total body water it is the percentage of body weight to water the tbw declines from as high as 90% in the early fetal life to 75 to 80% at birth and it again drops further to 60% at the end of one year from then on it remains constant distribution of water in different compartment of the body is as follows so the to- 60% of the total body weight is water how to that we dividing it into intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid icf and ecf icf 40% of the body weight otherwise 2/3 of the total body water is in the icf that is 67% of the total body water One third of the total body water, which is 33 percentage of the TBW, or 20 percent of the total body weight, is present in the ECF. Again, ECF is divided into two, such as the interstitial fluid and the plasma. Interstitial fluid has three fourth of the ECF, which is uh, which is 75 percent of the ECF. and uh, plasma has 25% of the ecf because ecf itself is 20% of the body weight 3/4 of it which is 15% of the body weight is by the interstitium 5% of the body weight is by the plasma because the ecf has 33% of the total body water 25% is present in the interstitial fluid and 8% only is present in the in plasma So the most abundant ion or the cation in ECF is sodium and the normal serum sodium concentration is somewhere between 135 and 145 milliequivalents per liter. Other predominant ions in the ECF include chlorine, chloride ions, bicarbonate ions, calcium ions. So sodium, chloride, calcium, bicarbonate are all present in the ECF. The most abundant ion or the cation in the ICF is potassium. The normal serum potassium concentration is only 3.5 to 5 milliequivalents per liter. Other predominant ions in the ICF are magnesium and other organic anions. So potassium, magnesium, organic anions are all present mostly in the ICF or the intercell- intracellular fluid. Water requirement in a normal child. The water requirement of a child depends upon the weight of the child. The weight of the child is less than or equal to 10 kg. We need the child needs 100 ml per kg per day. For example, if a, a child of 10 kg requires 1000 ml of water per day. If the child is between 10 to 20 kg, for the first 10 kg 100 ml is needed per kg per day. Now for the next 10 kg, it needs 50 ml per kg per day. for okay weight if the child's weight is more than 20 kg for the first 10 kg 100 ml per kg per day is needed for the second 10 kg the child needs 50 ml per kg per day and for the from then on after 20 kg plus 20 ml per kg per day for every kg every kg after above 20 kg okay so that is about the water requirement and all something about dehydration dehydration is a condition that occurs when the loss of body fluid mostly water exceeds the amount that is taken in most common cause of dehydration in children is diarrhea large amount of water and water soluble nutritive substances such as electrolytes metabolites and vitamins are lost from the body during diarrhea episodes loss of water from the body causes a reduction or shrinkage in the volume of the extracellular compartment or the ecf so most common cause of dehydration is diarrhea in case of children a lot of water and lot of nutrition like electrolytes vitamins metabolites are all lost from the body because of diarrhea depending on the concentration of the sodium the ecf reduction is classified into three types of dehydration isonatremic dehydration hyponatremic dehydration hypernatremic dehydration in isonatremic dehydration 50% of the diarrheal cases are due to isonatremic 40 to 45% is hypo 5% alone is hyper we we'll see this de- in detail in the next video thank you